faced an uphill battle throughout the history of sports, whether it is to be able to compete in sports, attain equal funding for programs, have access to facilities, or a number of other obstacles that have been thrown in their ways. Throughout the years at the University of Laverne, the women's volleyball team has been able to overcome this battle and have been very successful. In my documentary, I will present how we have become a championship team. In the 1920s at Laverne College, the Women Athletic Association supported both intramural and intercollegiate competition. Their athletic schedules were not highly organized like the men. They participated in volleyball games with Citrus and Mount Sac Junior Colleges. They also took part in the volleyball events at the San Diego State Play Day Celebration. The club was under leadership of Ruth Meyer. They played volleyball in the old, old gym. And they, they did volleyball and basketball and what have you. Yeah, and that was, a, that was their activity room also. In the 1940s, members of the girls' teams were divided from varsity and junior varsity competition. The women of Laverne College participated in six different sports, volleyball, tennis, bowling, basketball, badminton, and softball. Ms. Nancy Divney, an assistant professor of physical education, coached the girls' teams. Laverne belonged to a league of seven schools, Cal Poly, Occidental, Pomona, Pitzer, Whittier, and UC Riverside. They also played UCLA in volleyball and basketball. In 1962, the Women's Recreation Association replace the WAA. Not much going on for women in, uh, in, in sport, in a sense. I can remember when I was at Bonita High School, and, and we didn't have athletic programs per se. We had play days, mm -hmm. and, uh, which meant that teams from surrounding uh, communities would come, and they would put a number of players uh, on uh, from each team on various teams, oh. and they would compete uh, not as as uh, communities, but as as just teams. And then they would serve uh, punch and cookies after the contest. <laughs> and that was sort of like that too during the first years of of my coaching at, at Laverne. Oh, really? Oftentimes, uh, after a match, uh, both teams would go to a classroom and. And uh, punch and cookies would be served even at the collegiate level. Wow! Which is sort of interesting. We've come up, or we we departed from that <laughs> pretty pretty strongly since that or since the early days. Are you talking just about the women's teams, or you're talking about? I'm all talking teams? just about the women's team, yeah, women's see. teams. exciting to me uh, and fun to watch and, and some headaches too when you're involved in the administration part of it is the, the um, impact of Title IX uh, with uh, yes. athletics and having lived through that from when it was first approved which was in 1972 to when it was implemented in 1978 I believe it was and just that growth period and how to incorporate all this and how to meet the you know, financial demands and and rooms and and but it was exciting for to see the growth and live through the growth in women athletics you know, right. because that, they went from basically nothing to on par with the men in, in facilities competition you know opportunities anytime you got any increases in athletics it basically all went to women to try to get more even and actually took away from some of the men's programs to try to get mm. on par in which we had to be at a certain time and so um, it, it was a challenge for us Jimmy especially and that was money used primarily for coaching and travel and so forth or? everything uh, locker rooms uh, I mean things you know uniforms the, mm. the level of the, the quality of the uniforms mm. travel opportunities what you pay coaches locker rooms what what you know the, the men all got free towels I mean not, not to keep but to right use, right right well you, you have to do all the same things right for women. right if an individual happened to excel in a particular sport her femininity was questioned even as these thoughts have disappeared there are still those who look to women athletes as a different breed 
In a 1978 article in the Campus Times, Julie Ewins comments, Some people, when they think of women athletes, picture big, burly women who have huge muscles. I don't want to be thought of like that. I feel like I can have fun playing sports and still keep a nice appearance. So when you look at the proportionality of the general student body, we're about 60% um, female, 40% male. That may have changed a little bit, gotten a little closer. But it's still recently. pretty close to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so then your athletic program participation opportunities need to be reflective of that. But there's other uh, prongs as well. So when you look at facilities, equality of facilities, equality of coaching, equality of budgets, um, we have been able to address that. Laverne was the NAIA a member of the NAI organization and competed with uh, uh, teams like Cal Baptist, Baptist Azusa Pacific. Uh, church, mostly church uh, oriented uh, small college institutions. And, and, uh, and it was in 19, 1971, I think, when they were planning to, uh, to become and was accepted as a member of the SCIEC that they had to begin to expand their coaching staff uh, and improve their facilities and this is really the impetus I, I think that gave Laverne to uh, uh, get them on the right road to uh, uh, bettering their sports program both for, for men and women. There are three former members of the Southern California Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, UCLA, San Diego State University, and UC Santa Barbara. All former members now compete in NCAA Division I athletics. 1971, uh, uh, Laverne uh, joined the SCIAC Athletic Conference, oh. and Rex and Higgins and I came to Laverne at the same time. I happened to be uh, watching our, our uh, women's team uh, uh, work out and play, and I said, oh, I can do a better job than that. I, I developed the program over a number of years, and, and, uh, and we did very well. I was coached for uh, 20, 24 years. Wow. Coach Jimmy Pascal led the Lady Leos to 13 championships and in 1982 received College Volleyball Coaches Association Division Three Coach of the Year. It's because of him that the volleyball has become such an empire, I think, because he, right. he really did his due diligence on everything he did and he worked hard to get us where we were. Get out and recruit better players, uh, and so uh, that that uh, was the thing that got the program turned around. And and I, over the years, became a better coach also. So better coaching and better players uh, equaled uh, uh, some championship years or some very good years. Be known in the volleyball world, you had to. Uh, go and watch high school players play, uh, both in the high school setting and in the club setting. And so that was sort of a beginning of time for uh, women uh, to prosper in the field of athletics. Mm -hmm. Recruiting involves uh, building relationships with uh, the athlete and their family and also their coaching uh, circle, high school and their club volleyball, their travel volleyball. So, I think identifying uh, who are the people that support these athletes, and then I think uh, finding athletes who fit your style, fit your mm. um, ability to communicate, your ability to how you want to go uh, about the teaching and learning process. The recruiting piece was thorough, deep, a little bit of my fundraising background. That was another piece of my work here. Kind of helped in just identifying, you know, numbers. You, you got to recruit. If you need this many people, you better start recruiting this many. And, it dwindles down into some great athletes uh, coming here. Uh, the proof is in the type of athletes you get, and, and I also was blessed with great coaches. Uh, I had some fantastic assistant coaches that are coaching around the country now. Many of our first year players, uh, early year players, uh, uh, played club ball. Mm. And, 
and, and it has continued to be that, that way. First year, we were a member of the AIAW, which was the governing body for women's uh, athletics, uh, separate from the NC2A. The last AIAW national tournament was played at the University of Laverne, and, and we hosted 16 teams, mm -hmm. which is uh, unlike, uh, it was pretty neat because it was sort of a pageant type of, type of approach. And, and all 16 teams I, uh, are, are here. And, th and this is who, we, who Laverne was exposed to during that year. Laverne, Linville, Gallaudet, Trinity, Mount St. Joseph, Lynchburg, East Stroudsburg State, Redlands, Georgia Tech, McAllister, Cal Lutheran, Elmhurst, Biola, St. Catharines, Puget Sound, and Western Maryland. Mm. So we hosted all 16 of those teams, uh, uh, I believe it was Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, uh, in a Thursday, Friday, Saturday tournament. And we happened to win that tournament. Won our first national championship in 1981. Mm. And that was the, eight, the last year that the AIAW was the uh, controlling organization for women's sports. And then in 1982, uh, we won... Uh, the first uh, national NC2A national championship that, that we played in. The following year, we won the national championship, uh, NC2A championship, which was the second, uh, which was held in uh, San Diego at UCSD. During the 24 years that, that I was, was the coach, uh, we won 13 conference championships, wow. which means that we went to NC2A uh, each of those 13 years. I can remember both, both our, our wins when we won nationals in my junior and my senior year. Uh -huh. It was, well, it was, it was amazing. I remember, yeah, we were, being, we were playing against, um, oh, both of them were against SDS, San Diego State, SDSU. I remember, I know now, coming here, and just knowing, without even seeing them, that Occidental was our um, big rival. Yeah, they were our big rival. And so as soon as, as soon as they start talking about volleyball and Occidental, and you, you see the girls that have already been on the team start to talk to them, you automatically become a staunch, you know, yeah, Oxy. <laughs> because I guess they, they were a powerhouse. Yeah. They were a powerhouse up until... Up until we started. Yeah, so we to be Sophomore year, junior year, when we beat them, and it, that, it was like the catalyst that started to turn things in. It's, uh, it's like everything started to turn. We beat, we beat them. We started winning tournaments. We actually we won our, our conference, too. Every year from my freshman year all the way going up, every, every year just got better and better and uh, better. And, and then not only Oxy, was our we became the people we became the people to be uh. and and that's a, a kind of a cool feeling too we will, we will rock you. and i took over as the head coach in the fall of 98 and uh, our first two seasons we were second in the conference behind cal lutheran who was always our nemesis our rival mm. in the conference and uh, was blessed to uh, get things turned around. So we won nine straight conference championships. Wow. And uh, in 2001, we won the national championship. In 2008, we lost uh, my final match and final season with Laverne. It was 2008, we lost the national championship to Emory University. I mean, we had a national player of the year. We uh, went to five final fours in, that, in those 11 seasons. We won the conference nine of those 11 seasons, and we set the conference record for most consecutive wins uh, oh. of any program. We, we only <laughs> lost 10 matches over the 11 seasons wow. that I was the head coach in conference. And when I left, uh, I was the third winningest coach in the history of Division Three volleyball. We had set the bar very high, uh, mm -hmm. and I think maintaining that was always my, you know, sometimes... Uh, as Gino R.E.M. says, I just don't want to fail. I loved this institution. I loved this program. 
I felt a, a kinship to Jimmy Pascal as a mentor, as a friend. Um, I, I just knew that I wanted to give what I had. The University of Laverne Hall of Fame was created to recognize the very best of Laverne athletics. One of our special teams, the first national championship we played in was in uh, 